Hey guys, Sean Hammond with Premier Guitar here with another Winter Gear Slam. Today we've got Zach Myers from Shine Down who is showing us one of his new uh, signature PRS guitars. Zach, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us what is going down with this new guitar. I, I think it's a new color on an existing model. Is that right? Yeah, it was. We didn't. We really didn't want to change too much up from the the ZM2 just because. It, the guitar had done so well for the last five years and it was, it was obviously that it was a, a kind of a fan favorite. And, and my favorite part of the whole deal was that it was a, a favorite for people who had never, a never heard of me or either even maybe even didn't like me, but they enjoyed the guitar. And to me, that was something that was very important. And I, I really appreciated that. So we didn't want to stray too much playability wise from what I guess made the guitar wantable in the first place. Now, this um, is an we, yeah, SE, did, right? This is an SE, yeah. And we did change the color. If I understand right, isn't this like one of the company's most famous models, most best-selling models? It is. Uh, uh, I, I feel weird saying it, but yeah, but you said it, so it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the best-selling signature models I think they've ever had, which is makes me feel good that we... You know, on my first one, I think I I missed the mark. It did well. I'm not going to... I'm not taking anything away from the first signature guitar I did. It did well. Um, but I did, it was my first time designing a signature guitar. I designed it for me. I, you know, I, I wasn't thinking about consumerism of, of someone else wanting to play a guitar. You know, it was everything mm -hmm. that I wanted in a guitar. So it did have a, you know, a third humbucker in the middle, which obviously most players weren't a fan of. And it, you know, the color wasn't maybe where I, necessarily wanted to start with it. So when we did the second one, it was something where I, I wanted to design something that everyone could enjoy. And maybe it had a little bit of everything for everyone. And that was kind of important to me. And so going into this one, which is just, you know, the, maybe call us the ZM2 plus, I guess, because this is a, it's, it's not a third signature as much as it is a, a reimagining of the second signature. Okay. So did anything else change besides the new shades available or... Uh, we changed the color. We added the we added the headstock veneer, um, which is oh. very cool. Um, I, I've always been obsessed with private stock PRS guitars and have a been lucky enough to have a lot of them over the years. And so for me, I wanted to do that, and I knew it was something simple enough that they could do in that factory that would change the complete aesthetic of the guitar. Um, change the color of the bobbins, obviously the pickup bobbins. They were zebra on mm -hmm. the last one. They're they're black on this one. Um, for the other than that, everything else kind of same, change the tuners as well to the black tuners instead of oh, the vintage, nice. the vintage green. What is the name of this actual shade? This is if called Myers, Myers blue as pretentious as that may sound. Uh, <laughs> I will explain it. Um, we were trying to come up with a combination of colors, uh, for my kids. I wanted to kind of include my kids names in it. And for me, it was how do I do that? And then, you know, I, it, first it was Oliver blue. And then I was like, well, now I'm leaving my, now I'm leaving my other son out of this. So, so we just decided on Myers. And so if people think it's pretentious, it's fine. It's, it, I did it. So my kids would always have kind of have something as well with their name hooked to PRS. I thought that was like a, a cool thing. So, um, if there are any other new specs you want to share with us about it, that besides the uh, veneer and the, the bobbins and the tuners, do you want to just show us a few sounds, give people some, yeah, sure. Um, this is just enjoyment. like a tip. Yeah, this is just like a typical kind of dirty. Um, I think this is just like a a, a Bogner with a delay, maybe. <laughs> the bridge and then the middle I, the thing about the middle for me is something that i really enjoy as well um it's kind of getting getting it to the place where b between the two pickups it kind of creates this i don't i hate saying this word when i'm talking about other guitars but telly ish you know kind of kind of a neck pickup on a telly thing which is, is something i enjoy and i hate saying the word telly when i'm talking about my own guitar with another company but um <laughs> It's something that I, I'm a, I, I enjoy the middle position. I, it's some, it's something that I do often, especially on like a clean tone, but even on the dirty, it still has enough clarity and, you know, note choice to kind of like cut through and not get lost. <laughs> Which 
I enjoy that. I, I I like that. And then you know, if you want to get kind of bassy and and doom rocky, I guess. The- <laughs> pickup could kind of do those things as well, you know? So that's, you know, we didn't really want to go too far from the pickups because a lot of people enjoyed the pickups on the first one. And if they didn't, they would change the pickups. And I, but I saw a lot more people kind of playing the guitar, how I played it, which was pretty much straight out of the box. You know, I, I put, if they don't send it to me with my size strings on it, all we do is change the strings and put strap locks on it. So we really, really, we really don't do much to the guitar. And that's kind of the point of the SE line and going with the SE line for me was to have a guitar that a kid could take out of a box and play it. And he's playing it the same way he sees me play it on stage in front of 15,000 people. You know, that was to me, one of the most important things I could ever do as far as, you know, designing a guitar. Cool. Well, how about this before we go and have you play us out, if you don't mind, do you mind kind of refreshing people's memories or maybe people aren't aware of some of the more basic specs from the previous version. So do you want to just run down the body woods and all that? Yeah. So it's, um, mahogany back, uh, maple top, uh, maple veneer, obviously, um, rosewood board, um, the maple headstock veneer as well, which is something that I'm, I really enjoy. And I'm, I'm glad we got to do it because I think it adds a, a different aesthetic element to the guitar, which I'm really proud of. Um, we did, uh, also, this is kind of a big thing for me. The, the PRS stop tail adjustable bridge, which is my favorite bridge. I've said this, I feel like I, I, I'm like getting paid to say this cause I say it so much about this bridge, but, um, we do have the brass saddles in these just cause it's something that I enjoy. I feel like the high end and the, the kind of clarity uh, out of the note that you get with the brass saddles feels a little, I don't know, it could all be in my head. That'd be a Paul question. Paul, Paul, maybe, Paul maybe it goes back to your telly love. Cause a lot I think of old so. Yeah. Cause I have brass saddles. Every, every telly I've ever owned. If it wasn't vintage, I've put brass saddles on. So for me, the brass saddle thing was something really big. And I think Mark did it first. Actually. I think, I don't know if Mark ever did it on a SIGs. Uh, he, maybe he did, but uh, the brass saddles are always something I've done. And then always the clear knobs. And the question I get the most is why the clear knobs and my uh, geek design um, aesthetic explanation for this is that to me, if you have a blue guitar like this and you have a black knob or you have an amber knob, it doesn't go with this per se. I feel like you're, you're pulling away from what the guitar is. And so for me, it distracts a little bit. Yeah, it distracts a little bit. So to me, I've always put clear knobs on all my guitars, unless it was like a vintage Les Paul or something like that, or maybe a sunburst color guitar. If you have a, like an amber knob, it makes sense. But like if you have a a color, like a a rainbow palette, I guess you would say color like this, especially when it's faded and the, and the, the, the color kind of fades out a little bit. I think that the clear knob just makes for aesthetically, it's more eye pleasing as nerdy as that may be down to the most minuscule thing as nerdy as that may be. That's, that's why I appreciate it. Yeah, I can see that. Um, well, do you mind playing us out? And then I guess, but before that, do you want to tell people when this is available, where to go to find out more and maybe the price? It should be available to order now when you will get them. I'm not sure. I believe it may be March. Um, I I believe that's available now though. You can go to the PRS website and it's on there. The price point I believe is the same, if not maybe like 50 bucks more than the last one, uh, which are, as I think, MSRP is around nine, and I think most stores have them for eight fifty, seven ninety nine, or something like that, which I enjoy. Nice. All right, man. Uh, let's have people go on and check out more, and don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Premier Guitar videos, rig rundowns, and uh, other Winter Gear Slam videos. And uh, thanks again, Zach, for joining us. Thanks for having me, and uh, I'll, I'll give you the clean-ish uh, sound.